scandal that shook the world of professional sports and cast a shadow over one woman's life she says she's still trying to get out from under. Jen Sturger is her name, but far better known as the man she says began to contact her out of the blue one day with calls and increasingly explicit texts. He is football superstar Brett Favre. She shares her story with George Stephanopoulos for the first time. Her name may always be linked with one of football's greats, but Jen Sturger says she never wanted to be the Favre girl. Amazingly, she says she never even met the guy. What happened with Brett Favre? When's the first time you ever had any contact with him? George, I, I think the one thing that I want to make clear is that I don't know him. I've never, never met, met him. I've never met him. We've never met. There was no relationship. There was no affair. Everyone out there has this perception that I'm a homewrecker and I'm a gold digger. I'm none of those things. I've never met Brett Favre. Her long, strange trip through the underbelly of professional sports began with a cowboy hat and a skimpy bikini. Catnip for a cameraman filming the crowd at a Florida State football game. 1,500 red-blooded Americans just decided to apply to Florida State. And she parlayed those 15 seconds into a full-fledged modeling career posing for Playboy and Maxim, snagging on-camera gigs following college sports, even writing an advice column for Sports Illustrated. By 2008, Sturger had landed what she called her dream job with the New York Jets. There were no guidelines, no restrictions, there was no structure. It was just kind of like, all right, Jen, here's a microphone. Go entertain these people. And you must have been getting all kinds of attention. I would imagine that you would get asked out by a football player about once a day. <laughs> it wasn't that often. There was that one time. I, I, I was approached one day at the beginning of the preseason games by a man wearing a, a Jets badge, employee badge, who asked me, how would you feel if Brett Favre asked for your phone number? What would you say? And I just looked at him, my usual smart ass self, and I said, I'd say I like my job an awful lot, and I've been told I look remarkably like his wife. Have a yeah. good day. Have a good day. And I walked away, and that was the end of it. So you didn't give, no. didn't give the number? No. But somehow he did get it. Somehow. And that's when she started receiving those now infamous voicemail. Love to have you come over tonight. Give me a text. Love to see you tonight. He's the big star. He's it. It wasn't, it wasn't flattering, if that's what you're replying. No? No. He's married. And more than anything, I feel like it was intimidating. But the messages just kept coming, and they became more graphic. I think working for an organization like the Jets and, and the NFL, you expect a certain level of professionalism. And I don't think that sending pictures of certain body parts falls under that kind of professionalism. And when, when, when the pictures come, what do you do? I realize I'm in a lot of trouble. I realized just how serious it is and that this isn't going to go away. But you didn't go to the Jets because you just wanted to go, it to go away. And you wanted I just to wanted to job. do my job. I was told not to go to the Jets. I was told I'd lose my job. Looking back, do you think you should have or no? I can't answer that. It's never been my intention to ever play a victim in this whole thing. I'm not the right martyr for this cause. You know? Look at how I looked. People would say I asked for it. And I think that's been a lot of the perception that's been put out there, is that I asked for it, and it couldn't be further from the truth. By the end of the 2008 season, the messages stopped, but so did Jen's employment with the Jets. You think that was related to what happened? I have no idea. I don't. <laughs> what happened with the job? You were working for the Jets, and then it just went away? I had all intentions of coming back, and from what I could tell, just from interacting with people I worked with there, that they had all intentions of me coming back, and then they were just like the guy that stopped calling, you know? They just weren't there anymore. So I moved on. But moving on in the age of the internet is not always so easy. Last year, the sports blog Deadspin published the graphic text messages and voicemails, although Jen says they did so against her wishes. Both she and Deadspin say the messages were obtained through a third party, and she received no money for them. A lot of people think that you got paid for it. I have not made a dime off this entire situation. I've lost money. I lost my job during all of this.
After the story broke, the NFL launched an official investigation in which Favre reportedly admitted to leaving voicemails, but not the photos. But Sturger says all the messages came from the same cell phone number, and Favre was eventually fined $50,000 by the NFL for not fully cooperating with the investigation. I was hoping that when the NFL came out and said that I had done nothing wrong and that I was a good witness, that this would all go away. But it hasn't. There's still this perception of me out there that I somehow asked for this, that I deserved it. And it couldn't be further from the truth. As far as you're concerned, this is over. You want nothing more from the NFL? No. I don't want anything from anyone except to go back to work. You want nothing from Brett Favre? Absolutely nothing. No it was apology? never my intention. I don't want anything from him. I've never wanted anything from him. Does he owe you an apology? I don't really care if he gives me one or not. I don't, I just want to move on.